All right, so whew, moving along. This is my escape story part C of this day 10 years ago, what happened. So I get on the plane in Chicago. I'm like literally freaked out at this point. It's like I had no clue this was going to go down this way. I honestly, I didn't. And you have to know, I left Scientology mainly because of David Miscavige and the abuses I had seen. I also left out in the abuses in the last one, some of the serious, serious things that had happened as I knew four young people who had taken their own lives, including a very dear friend of mine who had shot himself to death. These were all young kids who were like 20 years old. And, you know, it was like, how can this happen? How can this happen? What What is going on, right? Plus, tons of my friends had died from OT5 through OT8. Tons. I mean, my brother called me once and said, you know, we're less than a year apart. And I know one person who's dead. And a ton of your good friends are dead, right? He was trying to help me wake up. Okay, so Th those were part of the abuses I'd forgotten in the last series. So that was another reason I was leaving. And Miscavige was the key reason because I knew, A, he was changing the tech. He changed the definition of FN, which is a whole nother video to make, but it was it's a key thing in changing the tech. And just, he, he'd creeped out all of us on OT7. He'd screwed us over, announced it at an event in the 90s. Oh, the reason the OT7s are screwed up is because we trained him wrong. So they can go to the registrar. The registrar said, you owe us $25,000 to go back to go, redo the whole thing all over again. Are you nuts? I wrote Miscavige myself that night and said, what are you thinking of? any good business. If I buy a car and I drive it home and it falls apart, the least they're going to do is bring me back a brand new spanking great car that works and throw in a CD player for free. And this is before everybody had CD players, right? And what do I get back? A form letter, we'll see you at Flag with the $25,000. And I was like, no, mm -mm, done. That's it. So then I thought, okay, I'll just train, which is really all I got into Scientology for anyway. I wanted to be an auditor, a counselor. I get onto that. It's turned into a total nightmare. Hubbard was way against memorization. Now it is complete and utter memorization run by these young kids going, ah, you have to go back to the beginning. And I'm like, you can take your flunk and stick it up your ass. I mean, I'm pissed that, you know, that was the training end of it. So now I'm doing the Office of Special Affairs, which is the last end of it. That turns into a nightmare, which I've told you guys about. I realize they're stopping free speech. I'm done. There's nothing else for me in Scientology. I'm over. Done. Finished. Got a boom. Right. So but the key person was Miscavige as far, far as I'm concerned. Now I'm in the plane. I'm positive I'm going to get off the plane and meet Jesse, Stacy, and Bob, which for me is pretty scary anyway, because Scientology's built all this stuff about how evil they are in my head. But they've been very kind to me on the phone, and I, you know, I have to make a leap. You know, there's the expression I told you, I have my little sign, leap and the net will appear. And I'm like, I've made the leap, you know, let's go meet them and see what happens. Okay, so I'm riding along, you know, t many, many hours it takes to get all the way across the country. But now, finally, it's 1.45 in the morning. I'm positive I'm just going to walk off the plane. It's going to be Bob, Stacy, and Je Jesse, and Bob Minton, Stacy Brooks, and Jesse Prince. That didn't happen that way. I go walking off the plane, and I see this mob of people at the end of the runway walking off. Half of them are over here, the Office of Special Affairs, with Penny Jones, who's someone I knew, leaping up and down. Tori, Tori, come talk to us. The police are in the middle saying, she has to decide. She has to decide. Everybody stand back. And Bob, Stacy, and Jesse are over here. And I am like, oh, what a nightmare. I know... If I don't talk to Penny Jones over on this side, she, they're going to think I'm drugged or some weirdo thing, right? So I go up to Penny and I say, what? And she goes, what are you doing? What is going on, Tori? 
And I go, Penny, it's really way too much for me to explain to you right now, right? And she goes, well, let me tell you this. I am good friends with David Miscavige. And if you need to get a message to him, I can get it to him tonight. Now, these fuckers had never helped me once when I needed to get a message to David Miscavige all that time I was on OT7 and I wanted off. Would anybody, including Penny Jones, who was an FSM field staff member, would she help me then getting a message to David Miscavige? No. Would Yachty? No. Would anybody? No. But now that I'm escaping out of the Church of Scientology, tonight she can get me a message to David Miscavige. And remember, the cops had said, everybody stand back. She has to decide, right? So after she mentioned Miscavige's name, I looked at the cops and I went, I pick them, meaning Stacy, Bob, and Jesse. And so they go, stand back to all of Osa and Penny and everybody else. You know, they say, everybody stand back. And they literally escort us out of the airport. And this is how brainwashed I was. I mean, I was so in the mindset at the time. Bob Mitten starts yelling out, ladies and gentlemen, because it was a big ruckus, right? And he goes, ladies and gentlemen, this upset is because of the Church of Scientology. And I put my hand over his mouth. I said, oh, don't say that. Don't say that. That's my church. That's my church. That's that's how deep I was into this at the time. And I was against the scavenge, but I thought the church was still fine. Hey, yeah, yeah. So the police, I say to them, I've got luggage I have to get. They go, we'll get it. You guys stand in the police office. We will get you out of here. So they go and get my luggage, and they literally escort me out of the police, I mean, out of the airport with Bob, Stacy, and Jesse. We get into a van, and we go to the airport. I mean, we go to a hotel. Now, there's a, what do you call it, a causeway between the airport and Clearwater. And out on the causeway, there's a hotel. Now, I don't know anything that's going on. Stacy, being really smart, knew how freaked out I was. It turned out, and I didn't find out this until, I think, years later. But, uh, or certainly months and months and months later. But Ursula Caberta, who is on the German government, was coming in the next day. And they needed to meet her, right? But I didn't know, they, Stacy knew I couldn't take it. You know, if, if it was Ursula, because Scientology really pumps out suppressive. She must be because she's on the government and all this stuff. So Stacy was sort of like, we're just going to stay in the hotel for, you know, a night. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So they get a suite. Bob and Stacy are over here. I'm over here. And there's a connecting door, right? So we literally stay up all night long with me talking to them, telling them my story, what my life was like, why I got into Scientology. And Bob is amazed because the old days were fun. We had a really good time. And Bob had never heard about that, at least not my view of it. And he was like, after he heard my story of the old days, he was like, wow, this makes sense. Now I get it, right? As far as the fun, because we had a lot of fun. And Anyway, we stay up all night long, and at 7 in the morning, I say, I'm really tired. i got to go to bed. He says, okay. And Stacy says, okay, you go to bed. And so it turns out they did fly my hair, my husband Harold in, and he goes and knocks on Bob and Stacy's door, right? And Bob opens up the door and says, Tori's sleeping and shuts the door. Now, I was sleeping in the other room, but he didn't. He just said, Tori's sleeping, right? So, anyway, that starts a whole nother thing, which now I don't know how many minutes I've done, but it, it ended up being pretty wild where my husband... I, there's another part I have to do to this. So, anyway, there I am. Now I'm in Clearwater. I'm in this hotel. I've talked to Bob and Stacy and met them, and I, now I'm sleeping, and that's the end of this part. And I will tell you, I guess there's a part four. I thought there was going to be three parts, but there's a part four. All right, so there you go. I hope you're enjoying it. I love you guys. Thank you.